Hey everybody, this is Pastor Scott of Dallas Baptist Church. I want to share a few devotional thoughts with you today. I want to share uh, on one of my favorite passages in the Bible, a, a special verse for me. Uh, Job chapter 1, verse 21. And we'll back up here in a moment and give you some more context. But let me read verse 21 first. It says, this is Job speaking. And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Um, this passage for me has always reminded me of how um, the stuff doesn't really matter. The things in life, the possessions of life, the, the trappings of life doesn't really matter. It's, it's all about God. Um, now, to give a bit of a background on Job here, most of you may have known that Job is, is tempted, uh, at least uh, the, uh, the Satan figure here in Job is trying to tempt him, trying to get him to curse God. Uh, and to give up on God. In fact, uh, God allows this figure to do this. Uh, we find in verse 13 and following that there are some um, uh, things going on here that are a little, uh, uh, a little crazy here. We've got uh, Job's uh, sons and daughters are eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And next thing you know, a messenger comes to Job, which Job, is, we find before this point, is a very pious man. Messenger comes to Job and says, Oxen and, and the donkeys, or excuse me, the oxen were plowing, the donkeys were feeding beside him, and the Sabians fell upon him and took them and killed him and struck down the servants at the edge of the sword. So we find in verse 14 this first wave of, of destruction of his property. And verse 16 starts out, While yet, or excuse me, while he was yet speaking. And we find that phrase two other times in this passage, verse 17, verse 18. So while he was yet speaking, another servant came, says the fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. I, I alone have escaped to tell you. So Job had just gotten word that his, his donkeys and oxen were dead. Then when he gets word, well, and servants too, then he gets word that the sheep and the servants are dead. And in verse 17, while he was yet speaking, so like bam, 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 right after another, he gets another word. Chaldeans formed three groups, according to verse 17, and ra made a raid on the camels and took them and struck down the servants at the edge of the sword. I alone have escaped to tell you. So bam, 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 bad news. And then bam, 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 more bad news. Verse 18, while he was yet speaking, there came another and said, your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And behold, a great wind came across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house that fell upon the young people and they are dead. And I alone have escaped to tell you. So, in successive waves, Job lost his possessions and his family, except for his wife. He, he's lost about everything. Um, and he, I've heard some people kind of jokingly, tongue-in-cheek say that he was the uh, Bill Gates of his day. He was very rich, um, had a lot of property. So what's Job's response? I mean, this this era of... Um, COVID-19, coronavirus shutdowns, and job loss were, you know, you know, millions upon millions of Americans are filing for unemployment, um, where people are having a hard time finding what they need at the grocery store. I think this, this is applicable here. Job's response, verse 20, and then Job arose, he got up, he didn't sit there, he got up, he tore his robe, it's a sign of repentance, of sorrow, of suffering. It's a physical uh, manifestation of one's inner feelings. He shaved his head. Again, another physical manifestation of his, his sorrow, his repentance, his grief. And he fell on the ground and worshipped. And of course, verse 21, he said, I came from my mother's womb naked and I shall return uh, naked. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You see, Job's response was not to wallow around in pity, not to get caught in depression and, and, and wallow in the doldrums, but his response was to worship God and to bless God because he realized every good blessing had come from God and it was all God's anyway and he was just entrusted with it. Uh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Naked I came from my mother's womb and naked I shall return. Wish we could say those words just to... Remind ourselves that the things don't matter. It's all about God. And we know from the story of Job, the rest of the book, that things don't get any easier for him. His, his wife pretty much tells him to curse God and die. He loses his health. His friends um, come along and they 
complicate things and tell him he's sinned, that, that God's punishing him for his sin. Job insists upon his righteousness. God is silent until the very end, and God puts him in his place and says, you know, where were you when I created this world? I'm God, and you're not. So Job does get blessed with the restoration of his stuff. Uh, but one thing scholars tell us about the book of Job is that the ending may not have been the, the original ending of the book. They may have been tacked on a little bit later uh, in, the, in the writing process of it. Some later scribes may have tacked it on to give more of a, a book into it. But imagine if Job hadn't got his stuff returned to him and, and restored, uh, multiplied even. He still would have said, you know, he, he still would have blessed the name of the Lord. And it's something we need to realize sometimes. Life doesn't always get restored the way we want it to. Life after this COVID-19 pandemic will not be the same. Some of us may lose property, may lose our stuff, may lose a family member. And life is going to be different. But God is still God and God's still in control. And God has still blessed us in many ways we can't even really think about. It's still beyond measure. So Philippians 4.13, I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength, uh, has often been uh, misquoted, misused. And, and some people take that verse to mean something effective that God gave me strength to do whatever he wants me to do. But that's not necessarily what Paul means by that. If you, you look over in the context of the, the surrounding verses, um, think about Paul's situation when he wrote the Philippian letter. Um, it gives a little bit more meaning. Um, Paul wrote the Philippian letter from jail. Uh, I wrote to the Philippian congregation. Uh, from jail, and he it's the one of the most joy-filled letters. In fact, the word, the various forms of the Greek word for joy just permeate the text. Um, it's full of joy. But Paul wrote it in a, a prison. In fact, uh, verse uh, 12, uh, the verse just before 413 4, reminds us, says, I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it's with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little, I can do everything through Christ to give me strength. In other words, 4.13 talks about contentment. Philippians 4.13 talks about contentment. Um, God can get us through the lean times. God can get us through the high times, the, the hills and the valleys, the, all the, the good and bad times of life. So as you think about your situation, as you're at home, as uh, in the middle of the pandemic, or maybe if you're an essential worker, you're out working, um, God is all we really need. It may not seem like that's rational. Uh, it may not seem like it's the, you know, makes sense, horse sense, if you will. But God is really all we need. We need to trust in Him because everything is from Him, every, every blessing's from Him. Um, he can get us through the rough and the bad, the good and the sad.